we left our story um, with me trying to run away from my um, open air boarding school at the age of seven with a very present finish because I'd been taken into the back of the station to a warm fire by the station master and um, then brought back to school. Um, I refused to promise that I wouldn't try again. So in the next um, few weeks, I must have been um, thinking o over things. Um, I'm sure I didn't run away st straight away. And I wasn't aware that the um, teachers were keeping an eye on me. Um, there wasn't a lot they could do. Um, we, I slept in the dormitory with 30 other children and my bed was uh, very close to the uh, washroom as it happened. Um, and uh, so one, one night, I haven't got a clue how I knew what time to get up, but I just got up, it was dark. Um, we had a light that we could put on um, in the washroom so we could go to the loo. And in there was where our school clothes were kept. Um, so I got out my pyjamas and put my school clothes on. However, I couldn't find my shoes. Uh, and I looked, but I knew I didn't want to hang around because I, they'd be asking, what the hell are you doing putting your clothes on? So um, I just found somebody else, some shoes that fit. It was a pair of pumps um, and uh, I put them on and got out, left, went across the yard, went past this school mi uh, mistress's office uh, and then I had to go past the, her house um, which was on the edge of the um, school grounds and um, get, gave that a wide berth um, and managed to get down onto the road that led to freedom. Well, there I was confronted by a terrifying tree. I had to go under this tree to get to the station. And I remember stopping and um, taking stock of my situation. And I didn't like the idea. It was either go under this tree and it was winter and it was all bare branches, very unfriendly, um, threatening looking tree that stretched right over the top of the road from the right hand side up and over and down the other side and um, there's me a very small boy of seven year old seven um, having to walk under this tree and um, there may well have been um, noises going on in, in the hedgerows but I, I know I was terrified but not terrified enough to go back to school. That was not an option having got this far. So there was nothing for it. And I had to go under that tree. This I did and I didn't, um, nothing, didn't, nobody grabbed me from behind. Um, and I went down, t um, down the road. As I went down the road, I could see the station in the distance and it was a clear night and there's a memory that really uh, sticks um, is are all these lovely lights. Um, it was a, as though the uh, station had been done up for Christmas. There were red and um, green lights all the way down uh, above where the station buildings were, it seemed to me. They were probably just signal lights, but um, looked very bright and inviting to me. As I approached, I realised I had to give the, um, the uh, station master a wide berth. So uh, I went up onto the platform on the other side to where the offices were. And in there, there was a waiting room and I got in, went in the waiting room and waited. Um, after quite some time, a train, and I, I was aware of being quite cold uh, but at some time a train came to the station and I made sure that I um, 
showed myself up the, the minimum amount of time. Nobody had come into the waiting room. Um, there were no lights in it. And I just made my way very quickly walking across the platform, joined the customers, the um, other passengers, uh, and got on the train. Off we went. Success. I um, was on my way home. We drew up the next station, and uh, to my consternation, I remember absolute shock. I realised that we'd come into Bromsgrove. Bromsgrove was not the way I needed to go, I realised quickly, and I got off the train. We're going in the wrong direction. So I asked um, which way to the, for the train to, um, to Birmingham, and was told it was on the other platform. So I waited for the train uh, coming to Birmingham and got on. Now we had to travel back through the station that we had just come from. And I was very aware that I didn't want to get caught. I was going back into dangerous country, dangerous area. And when we drew in, I was um, deliberately hiding deep in my seat into the corner. I kind of shriveled and made myself as, uh, as small as possible uh, and um, listened and peeked out of my corner of my eye to see what was going on the platform outside me. There were people scurrying up and down, looking quite official, and I'm sure they'd known and found out by then at the school, and they'd phoned the station to say one of our children are on the, is on the loose. Um, so I heard these remarks being made. Um, watch out, there's one of these um, Hunters Hill pupils um, trying to escape again. But it didn't occur to them to walk down the train and look for me. Um, they probably wouldn't have um, given that amount of time anyway. So the train left, the, uh, left and we were definitely on my way to, on the way home. Um, the train didn't have far to go to the station I wanted to get to. It was at Northfield and it was just a, a few stops. Um, and when we drew up to Northfield, and it feels strange to be back home again, um, I could have just walked off the train and down the, uh, down the stairs, leaving the platform, um, down to the village. But I had this honest streak, and uh, I just had to give my name and address to the ticket office to make sure that I paid for my ticket. It was going to cost, as I learnt, from the, um, the guy in the ticket office, 7p. No, sorry, 7 old pence, 7 pence. And that was equivalent to about 3p. So I went in the ticket office and told him, spun him this yarn that I'd been away at um, a, a scout camp and it had been um, very wet. I can't remember what the real weather was like. It must have been some truth in that and that I'd um, needed to come home and I hadn't got any money. Um, I wasn't carrying anything, it was, um, they must have thought it rather strange, but the guy in the ticket office didn't raise any questions. He was just glad to be told that um, I lived at 65 um, Woodland Road and um, that was it. I walked off and I was off I was going home. Um, walked up the hill with my, the house on the right at the um, top of the hill and um, didn't want to go to the front door and um, that was far too formal so I went round the back and uh, climbed up the stairs to where my mother was in a um, what was actually um, um, a first floor um, room with French windows coming onto these steps. I knocked on the window my mother was in um, bed. She got up and I can remember a startled face when she saw me there standing at the window. I was quickly um, brought in um, and told off very clearly. Um, I thought I might get a, a, a tremendous welcome and oh lovely to see you again Jeff. Um, how are you? But no, um, 
I may have been given a cup of tea. Um, I definitely didn't get any breakfast. Um, and it was back as fast as she could um, down to the station with me in tow. So um, I a bit crestfallen. My mother hadn't meant what she said when she said, um, you can go to the open air school and if you don't like it, you don't have to stay. It was a load of rubbish. Um, it was go to the go to the boarding school, just knuckle down, put up with it, and um, that's where you you're going to stay until we say you can come home. Now, having been told that, it felt a lot clearer, and I was okay. So I um, went along with. Uh, I had no choice. Um, I wasn't going to run away from my mother. That would have been the whole point of the exercise to reach home. So I went back to school and there was greeted by the, the headmistress yet again. Um, I got into trouble with her, nevertheless, because um, I had stolen somebody else's pumps in order to get home. So I was still in the doghouse and some poor lad apparently had had to search and search and search for his pumps and there were nobody to be found because they were on my feet. So um, that was the end of the, uh, my adventures trying to run away. Um, my, the headmistress again asked me to promise that I wouldn't um, run away and this time I agreed. Yes, Miss Buckley, I won't run away again and I meant it.